Hi you two, welcome to your English for today. It is Monday the 25th of January and in today's lesson we are going to be looking at um, some information in a text and answering some questions about it. Okay, to warm up our writing brains, the first thing that I would like everybody to do is their handwriting. If you have got a copy of the worksheet in front of you, amazing, you can use the handwriting lines provided. If you've not got a copy of the worksheet, that is okay, you can do it on some paper. Now, today's handwriting is going to be a little bit different because if you are in the spelling bees group, I'm going to ask that you write this word three times for me. It's the word handle. And in your spellings, you're going to be looking at the L-E ending. So that's why I want the spelling bees to practice this word. Now, if you are a wise owl, I would like you to practice this word. The word is whirl. And in your spellings this week, you're looking at the er uh sound in a word. So I'll repeat it again. If you're in the spelling bees, I would like you to write this word here three times for me. If you are in the wise owls, then I would like you to write this word for me three times. OK, so let's warm up our writing brains. Let's write down those words three times. You don't need to write both of them. You just choose whichever one matches your group, spelling bees or wise owls. Pause the video here and practice one of those words three times for me. Amazing! As always, we'll begin with a little starter activity, something to get us thinking about our writing. Now, I have a picture of a superhero on the screen now, and the superhero looks to me like he is saving somebody, he's just saved someone. I'd like you to write a sentence about this picture using an ED verb. Now, before anyone says, what's one of those? I've put some examples of some ED verbs on the screen for you. Now, an ED verb is just a doing word that's in the past tense and it ends with ED. So it's the spelling rule that has ED at the end. And I've put an example of some on the screen right now. And we've looked at these types of words before. And we know that if it's got an ed ending, then it just means that it's in the past tense. It's something that's happened. So my sentence about this picture might be Superman saved the lady from the evil villain or something like that. So my ed verb was the word saved because it ends in ed, the word saved. So what I would like you to do is pause the video here and write me a sentence on a bit of paper or the back of your worksheet. Write me a sentence that uses the ED verb, one of those words in a, in a sentence about that picture. So you might choose, I've just seen one on here, you might choose waited. You might put the lady waited and waited to be saved. Um, the lady wanted someone to save her from the evil villain or something like that. OK, pause the video here. Choose one of those words or maybe think of one of your own like I did with saved and write me a sentence that uses an ED verb. Pause the video. Off you go. OK, now I'm very excited about our English lessons for this week because this week we're going to be writing a fact file about our very own superhero. So we're getting the chance to create our own superhero and write a fact file all about them. I'm so excited. A fact file is a collection of information about something so when someone is writing a fact file, they've collected lots and lots of information about one thing and then they, they write it all down to share it with us. And we're going to look today at a good example of a fact file. And then hopefully, because we've looked at this good example, when we start to write our fact file this week, we can start to get some ideas of what it should look like. OK, so we're going to look at a good example. but actually. Just before we look at the good example, I want to show you something. 
I want to show you a fact file that I found over the weekend. And it was taken out of a magazine that one of my family members likes to read. And the magazine that one of my family members likes to read is a Lego magazine. They like to read the Lego superhero magazine. And this was something that they found in there and they've sent it to my house so that I could look at it too. And it's a fact file all about a Lego superhero, Nightwing. You might have heard of him. It's a fact file all about him. It says at the top, fact file, Nightwing. Okay, and in this fact file, there's lots of different information about him. So here, there's some information about his strengths, the things that he's good at. And then here, it tells us the things that he carries around with him. And then on the other page, it's some more information about Nightwing. Um, it gives us some knowledge about him and some other bits of information so i wanted to show you that good example um just on video there to show you that you can find fact files in magazines you can find them on the internet you can find them in lots of different places and that's just one that i wanted to show to you okay here is a good example of a fact file what a good one looks like and in today's lesson we're going to read through this fact file and then I've given you some questions that I want you to answer now the questions that I'm going to give to you you can find all of the answers in the text so it's a fact file with lots of information and when I ask you some questions in a little while you'll be able to find those answers in the text okay so a fact file is split up into different parts here's the first part of this fact file it's called an introductory sentence that's just a fancy way of saying the first sentence so i'm going to read the first sentence to you now it says have you ever wanted to know more about the amazing super spider-man so this fact file is called all about the amazing spider-man so the first sentence asks me if i want to know more about him yes i do the second part of my fact file my second subheading it says history spider-man is really called peter parker he was a teenager who was bitten by a radioactive powerful spider he then got spider powers and began his life as the amazing spider-man that's the second subheading telling us about the history of spider-man the next one says enemies spider-man has lots of enemies like dr octopus his best friend is called harry and harry's dad is called norman osborne who is actually the green goblin this is spider-man's worst enemy spider-man is not scared of his enemies because he is brave strong and powerful so we've learned about where he comes from. We've learned about his enemies. Let's read about his superpowers. Spider-Man has lots of powers, including climbing walls, super strength and shooting webs. He can swing from building to building when he needs to. Spider-Man is extremely clever and he has always been top of his class. This means he is the smartest. He also has a spider sense, which means that he can tell when people are in danger. Oh, so he just knows he, it's in his sense, one of his senses is his spider sense. So we've read about his history. We've read about his enemies. We've read about his superpowers. Let's now read about his weaknesses. Spider-Man's main weakness is that he is still human. If he gets too badly injured, he may die. So that's his main weakness. So we've heard about his history, his enemies, his superpowers, his weaknesses. And let's read the final subheading, friends. Spider-Man usually works alone, but he does have a best friend at school called Harry. Spider-Man has a girlfriend called MJ. He also looks after his aunt at home called Aunt May. So in this fact file all about Spider-Man, it's told us some key pieces of information about him. It's told us where he comes from, 
the enemies he has, the superpowers he has, the, the weaknesses that he has and who his friends are too. OK, I'm not going to spend too long explaining your main activity today because I think it's going to be one that you can just get on with. What I'm looking for in today's activity is for you to find the answers to those 11 questions all about um, Spider-Man. It's like a comprehension, so you're going to read the text and then find the answers in the text. But the reason why I'm getting you to do this today with, with the fact file is for you to really understand what a fact file looks like and how you can find those in those pieces of information in your fact file. So I've just put both parts of the worksheet that you're going to need up on the screen now. You're going to need um, the one with all the information in, the actual fact file, Ooh, and then you're going to need the questions too, okay? If you can't print them out, that's absolutely fine. You could just have the fact file up on the screen and then um, a piece of paper to write down your answers as. OK, just like we would in a comprehension, I actually would like to do the first few questions with you just so that you can get an idea of how to find the answers. So there are four questions up on the screen now. I'm going to read them to you and then I'm going to show you how you can find the answer in the text, just like we would if this was a comprehension. So number one says, what is Spider-Man's real name? Number two says, why did he get spider powers? Number three says, what is Harry's dad called? And number four says, who is Spider-Man's worst enemy? So whilst I was reading those questions out to you, you might have already been thinking about where you read that information in the text. So let's go through them together. OK, so number one says, what is Spider-Man's real name? So I'm going to look in the history part of my fact file because I know that that provided some information about Spider-Man and where he come from. Spider-Man is really called Peter Parker. So I will need to, on the line here, I will need to write Peter and then his last name, Parker. I'm not going to write it with um, the mouse because it's very hard, but you guys can fill it in now, Peter Parker. Pause the video and answer the question. Number two says, why did he get spider powers? So I'm going to carry on reading. He was a teenager who was bitten by a radioactive, powerful spider. He then got spider powers. So why did he get spider powers? He was bitten. So I'm going to start with this word here. He was bitten by a radioactive, powerful spider. Pause the video, answer the question. Number three says, what is Harry's dad called? He then got spider powers and began his life as the amazing Spider-Man. Enemies. Spider-Man has lots of enemies like Dr. Octopus. His best friend is called Harry. Harry's dad is called Norman Osborn, who is actually the Green Goblin. So you will need to answer that question here. So you're probably going to write Norman Osborn, who is actually the Green Goblin. Pause the video, answer the question. And then it says, this is Spider-Man's worst enemy. Question number four says, who is Spider-Man's worst enemy? So you're going to write down the Green Goblin because that is his worst enemy. Capital letters for Green and Goblin, it's somebody's name. Pause the video here and answer your questions. Now, you've just answered the first four questions with me, so I would really like now for you to answer the rest on your own or with your grown up if you're working with your grown up too. Remember, it's OK to ask for some help if we need some help, but the, all of the answers are in the text. So maybe if you can't find an answer, move on to the next one. You could always come back to it. But all of the answers are in the text and they're also in chronological order as well. So wherever the answer to number four was about the Green Goblin, the answer to number five, that will be somewhere underneath it, won't it? OK, so I'd like you to answer the rest of the questions now. They're all who or what questions. So it might be asking about a person or it might be asking you to find um, 
what his powers are and what his spider sense is. I can see question six is asking about spider sense, so I'll need to go and find spider sense in the text, won't I? Use all of your comprehension skills to answer this activity. OK, so it's not a comprehension lesson, but you're using all of those reading skills to find the answers, which you're all amazing at anyway. Okay, dokie. So I'd like you to carry on with that activity now. Pause the video here. And when you've finished, I want you to come back to me because I've got one small job left for you to do. So pause the video, answer the rest of the questions and then come back because I've got one small job left for you. OK. Hopefully you've answered all of your questions. I can't wait to see your answers. And I hope that you've been able to get to know a fact file a little bit better. Now, I've got a bit of a challenge for you today in writing because in this lesson, I've not actually asked you to write anything apart from the answers to the questions. I've not had you thinking about your writing skills. So this is what I want you to do now. I've got three pieces of punctuation. I've got an exclamation mark. I've got a full stop and I've got a question mark. And what I'd like you to do is look through my three sentences. There's number one. There's number two. That's a rubbish too, Miss Buckley. And there's number three. I'd like you to read those three sentences and figure out which punctuation would go at the end. So the first one says stop thief. Now, I know that I could either put an exclamation mark or a full stop on the end of that. It's not a question, so I know it's one of those two. The second one says, that man stole a necklace out of my jewellery shop. Which piece of punctuation would need to go on the end? And the last one says, will the police catch him? Which punctuation needs to go on the end? OK, when you've done that, I want you to write two sentences on your own, of your own, and you can use an exclamation, a full stop or a question mark. This should be just a quick five minute activity just to make sure that you're still thinking about your writing skills. Lovely listening, everybody, and I will see you for English tomorrow.